Okay, so I've got my creature in there. I've made its lighting match. I've put a shadow underneath it. I even put a little bit of a reflection in the water. Now I'm just looking at the overall. I've put some texture fills in. I've kind of glazed over. Um, I'm looking at the overall and seeing if there's anything I want to improve. Even in the landscape, I just want to make this the best composition I can. This is maybe the last time we'll be using these elements and compositing them. And this debris bugs me a little bit. I think it's just because of coloring. So I'm going to make a duplicate of it. Turn off the layer behind and then play with color balance. Just because I think it's a little too cyan. Put some red back into it. Yeah, that helps a lot to kind of sink it back. Maybe a little bit of yellow. Go to the shadows. See what does it need to kind of match those trees. Yeah, that helps. And I might even take its opacity just down a tiny bit because it's in the background. And that helps to kind of sync it without having to blur it or anything. It helps it sit back. And, you know, maybe up its opacity a little, but blur it a little. <laughs> so you get to make these decisions. But now we're talking about subtlety, for sure. Little issues. And then when I'm looking at it, this looks really sharp and nice. This looks a little vague. So I'm going to do something I don't usually do, which is I'm going to try to make this look sharper by taking the shadows and burning them really light exposure and then doing something I almost never do but I think it will be helpful in this in this instance I'm gonna to go to filter and sharpen and use smart sharpen as long as you don't overuse it this can be useful for spot treatments and this this isn't magic this isn't like a special effects show or anything. But what it can do is it increases the contrast be between pixels that are very different from each other, which it takes to be edges. So let's see, gave me a preview, but it might be way too much, we will see. I probably should have done this on a, a duplicate on top so I can fade it in. And if I need to, I will. But just like you can gouge and blur, sometimes you can bring a little sharpness back in. But then the other option is just to take the, the focus down on this a little bit so that the head really pops out more than the, the texture. I like that you can see the teeth. You got the little spots of color in there. Yeah, yeah. okay, that, that overdid it a little bit. See what I mean? Yeah. But if I make a duplicate of it, and I do a much subtler version of that, <laughs> so sharpen, sharp, smart sharp. I'm not, I'm not used to this new version's previews. Move all these sliders down quite a bit. then that will be useful. Then I probably will take the focus away from this a little bit. Um, I'd like to do that more with a texture fill than with actually changing the pixels. Because it's better to have sharp focus than soft focus. If something's too sharp, you can always soften it. So here you see that sharpness. Let me just take that opacity down, use a little bit of it. Yeah, now that helps a lot. Kind of pushes that forward. Okay, now, 
want to do here. We have so many things affecting it. I think one thing I'll do is erase out a little bit of that texture fill. But you know what? What I can do without affecting the pixels, ah, uh, that's the one. Let's just take that down a little. Or erase out from that. So get, let that head really show. There we go. Oh, that's too dark. So you just got to find what what layer is, is affecting things. And mess with it. You can even clone stamp just on that layer. So clone stamping current layer is good for texture fills. Kind of be able to, to modulate them and play with them a little bit more directly. And then you can always blur texture fills. They're made to be soft edged. There we go. All right. So last trick over the top of everything. This is a, a weird trick, but might as well show you. If you just want to try something new, do a new blank layer, you're going to fill it this time with a gradient. So you go to your gradient tool, you click on your scale, and you're just going to pick a black to white even gradation gradient. You can do it any way you like. See the opacity of that is not what I want. Normal mode, nothing selected. Oh, it's because it's on pin light here. <laughs> Normal, opacity 100%, there we go. You just paint in the gradient. You can do it either uh, light on the bottom, dark on top, or vice versa. I'm gonna do dark on top because it's, it's kind of dusk. And then I'm gonna set that to overlay, right? And that can really change things, right? I can play with the opacity of it. See how that changes the weather. It's like the sun dimming as I go. And I can even give it a color. So I'm going to just make that really subtle. I could try flipping it. And that actually might, might be nice. Let's see. Yeah, I think it's actually, it works that way. And then if I want to add it, give it a little bit of color, I just go to image adjustment, hue saturation, and click colorize. And I can give the whole gradation a slight tone. This is like an Instagram filter. And I can decide how bright I want it to be. See, that's like a greenish tone. That's not my favorite. I have a lot of purple in there, but maybe I want something a little more Cyan. Like what is the temperature of the light at dusk? Yeah, so if I set it to normal, this is what this layer looks like. At 15%, looks like that, right? So this is, is kind of a texture overlay that's just a color correction. So keep it maybe about 17%. And instead of leaving it at normal, set it to overlay so those shadows can come through. Maybe even bump it up a little bit. Yeah, I like that. And I like to see it from a distance too. So you want to make sure it's readable even when it's small. All right. And then the last kind of thing you can do is you can hold down Option, you can say Layer, 
merge visible. Now everything's all on one layer at the top. And then you can say image adjustment, direct adjustment, desaturate it, take all the color away from it. Make sure you can read it well in grayscale. Because if you can't read it in grayscale, it means your lighting isn't optimized to its best advantage. And once it's at grayscale, you can go to image adjustments levels and you can play with them. You know, deepen your shadows a little bit, brighten your highlights a little bit. Basically, if it was a black and white photo, what levels would you want? All right, and then once you have that, what you can do is just take your opacity and blend that in slowly underneath. And at zero, now those yellows look way too garish. So a little bit of toning it is going to go a long way. If you like kind of gritty reality, maybe you want a lot of the color taken out, like that. But I want maybe, oh, let's do about 27%. All right. Check your edges. Make sure there's nothing weird that, that got misaligned. Any hard edges that are doing weird things. And sure, if I got really close, there are some edges I could work on. But yeah, that's going to that's gonna do it. So I save it. File save. This is assignment three. I need to have my name in that. So I'm going to make sure I do that. Having your name as part of your, your file name is a good backup in case you're not able to label it with your name in Photobucket. So I'm going to change its name here. And then I'm going to save it as a, not as a PNG, because that takes up memory needlessly, because I don't need to support transparency. So if I'm going to save it as a rectangular image, what am I going to save it as for online use? A JPEG. And I, I want it to be no larger than five megabytes to the desktop with my name in front as a JPEG file to the desktop. And if I left it at maximum, it would be 12 megabytes, which is a whole lot less than the 60 or so megabytes it is as a Photoshop file. But if you do it right around nine or 10, it should be what you want. All right. And that is large enough to print. If you go to image size, it's large enough to print 11 by 14 inches by 350 or even 16 by 20 inches at 240. 240 is the very lowest quality I'll ever print in this lab. Professional standards 300, but you can go to 240 really before you can tell that something's not good resolution. All right now, where do we upload it? I'm going to upload it to Instructor Demonstrations. You find the right folder. Yours is Assignment 3. And we're going to upload our JPEG. But we're missing something. So I'm going to just to show me a little bit of your process, even though mine got pretty complicated. We're going to save a layer with um, the adjustment layer behind just turned to normal mode. So we can see all the dodging and burning and shadows. So I'm going to take my furthest back adjustment layer. Which is here. I'm going to change it to normal. Right? And then I'm going to save that as a JPEG. I'll just give it an overlay layer tag at the end so it doesn't overwrite my other JPEG. So those are the two things you're submitting for this. So I can see I did a lot of adjustments, not just to the creature itself, but to the environment. And then you label it 
with your overlay layer as number one and your finished as number two.